What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. What a way to start out November. Not only is AMC ripping, but the market is continuing to be really hot. I've talked about this a little bit over the past few weeks that the market always, you know, goes in cycles and you have periods of time where the market is going to be a little bit slow. It's going to be stagnation. And you've got other times where stocks are going to run. And we have now gotten back into a period over the last few weeks where stocks are running and they are running hard. So I want to talk about everything that goes into finding some of these stocks, what to look, look for, and just break everything down for you. And hopefully this video will be able to help you identify some of these trends going forward. And the biggest reason is because... Like I said, these are cycles and they don't last forever. So feel free to leave a comment down below. Let me know if this video helped you or let me know also if you have any other questions and I can explain this in a little bit deeper of a fashion, but I'm gonna get right into it right now. So today, this one was one of our best plays, BTTX. It had gapped up overnight, had a little bit of action um, in after hours last week, went from about 8, 8.50, actually about 9.50, I'm sorry. And um, this morning when it opened up early, early on at 4 a.m. In, 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 in pre-market, it went all the way up to a high of $26. So this one had picked up on the scanner when I had opened up my, my, my computer, logged on. Um, for everybody who is wondering, I use trade ideas to find out most of this information uh, I just, you have the standard one. It's about $118 a month, but I will say this, that um, Thinkorswim does have their own pre-market scanners that you can build. Or if you don't use Thinkorswim, you can literally go to marketwatch.com and they have a lot of runners right here at the bottom. I hope you can see this where it says trending tickers, uh, pre-market, and you'll be able to find, okay, what's up, what's down. You'll be able to go into it. Like this was ABVC. This was another one that we played today. Uh, I can tell you a little bit about what is happening. And then also Investor Place right here will also post uh, today's big, biggest pre-market stock movers. So pause this video for a second and remember this going forward. If you don't want to pay for a scanner yet, or if you just want to learn first, I always suggest you kind of learn, be able to watch some stocks going forward. And obviously, you know, people post all this type of information on Twitter as well. So if you can follow a really good source that just posts this information, not always looking for pumps, um, that will help as well. But let's get into it. So I had shouted this out very early uh, at about nine o'clock this morning. And I wanted to highlight this. I said another big early, you know, pre-market gap. I said it was holding that $14 support right now. I said break of 14, just let it sell off a little bit and look for any reversals for the entries. And if it got above $16, that is going to give room for a quick move to $18 or more. But I want to highlight these two points that I actually written on other stocks. I don't want to write on every single one. But ABVC, I said, keep an eye on those runners lately for all day moves. And then on this one, I said, runners have been very common lately. So keep this one on radar. And what I mean by that, and I'm sure you can see some of this happen. And I'm going to go over a few stocks over the past few weeks just to give you guys an idea but stocks, they're letting the stocks run, run hard. They're going 100%, 150%. Back in you know July and August, when everybody was on vacation, we were playing all large cap stocks and you just weren't getting these massive moves. So I feel, one, I've been through these cycles numerous times before. This is one of my favorite. And I feel like if I can kind of explain this as best as I can to everyone, they could really capitalize on this and start off small or just watch some of these charts. Because like I said, education is priceless. If you can learn this, you will be able to provide for your family and loved ones forever. So let's get into that play. The reason, first off, why I said that $14 support is as you can see, as I zoom in a little bit right here, you can see it was bouncing off that $14 support and obviously look for any reversals. So this one didn't pick back up until it got above $16. And I said that pre-market, wait for it to get above $16 because I always like to wait for a stock to show me that it wants to move in a specific direction. I really don't try to guess. I, I, I do play some breakouts and I will buy on some supports, but that gray area of in between where it doesn't really show too much, too much direction hasn't done very well for me. So I always like to wait for a stock to show me, all right? So this one we picked up at about $16 and obviously it ran all the way up to $29. But let me explain, zoom in a little bit and let me explain a little bit more of my thought process behind this this entire play just to really 
give everybody an understanding why I stayed with it, why I, what I saw was continuing to going to happen. I'm gonna jump over to this screenshot um, right here first, and then we'll take a look back at the charts. So I'd said, I said, for everyone that is not seeing what another individual who's a phenomenal trader in the group, I hope you're watching this, you are, have grown so much, you're doing absolutely great, and thank you for all the advice that you give to everybody else. But Paul, I said, look at BTTX. I said, it held support. I said, every time it went down a little bit, shares were scooped up. It didn't break that support. I also said the band or channel was getting tighter, and we'll go into that in just a second. I said, meaning the range of each candle was getting smaller. I said, these are patterns we like to see. And I had made a joke earlier before it actually got its its, uh, it, its pop right before 11 o'clock, another pop. I said, I made a joke about an Instapot. Like when you see the channels just getting tighter and tighter and tighter, it's holding support, it's flagging, it, the range is getting smaller between each you know one minute, two minute, three minute, or five minute candle you're using. I said, that is pressure building. Chances are the market makers could be trapping shorts and it's pressure and it's gonna blow right to the upside. And I, we've seen it happen time and time again. Somebody had asked, what was the price target on this? I said, it all depends. I said, you know, will it build new support and consolidate or fade back? I said, this is why you continue to move your stops up. And I also said, for example, all right, this is exactly how to play a chart like this. For example, if you got in at $16, you, you, you let the stock show you, it's gonna get to that point. It wants to break out. I said, you get in at $16, ran, random number, let's say you get in a thousand shares, and you can use this for whatever, you know, just use, like I said, the one fifth rule or whatever you feel comfortable doing. But I just, just for an example, I said, what you would, what I would do is I would sell 200 shares at $17 to ensure gains are there. You're protecting some gains, but you're also giving room for more profit. And I said, now you set a new stop loss at 1630. I think at this price, it was almost, it had gotten up to, I want to say, I want to say about $18. And we'll look at the chart in a minute. I said, but this is what you can do on a chart like this, not one that goes parabolic. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I say, anytime you see a chart go absolutely parabolic, just as fast as it moves up, it's going to move down. So now let's take a look at the charts and here we were at $16 and I'm gonna zoom in I'm gonna have to zoom out a little bit to really show everybody I said it got up it got up to $16 and it began to form a bit of a flag and as you can see here it held that same support it consolidated and it channeled this is exactly what you're looking for and as soon as volume came back into it it did the same thing pop to the upside all right, and this is what you're looking for when it comes to the, the Instapot. As it gets tighter and tighter, the pressure just builds and it's a blast. And this one went all the way from 1628 up to about $18. And therefore you continue to move through out the day. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more just to show you on another time frame. And, I, and you can always zoom in to see this or take another look back. But if you look right here again at about 1130, and this is after I alerted this, it did the same thing. It got that move to the upside and then it began to flag a little bit. Let me stretch this out for you. It began to flag and that's when you can see it's holding very well, it's consolidating. And the more pressure it can build, it's gonna continue to move up. So this is one of those plays that you could have gotten in at $16, let it run just a little bit, ensure you're gonna take some of those gains, you have your stops. Once it moves, you have your stop set at about sixteen dollars because you want to protect your gains. You always want to always want to lock in profit. I talk about it all the time. You know, another great trader in the group had said the only way to make money in the market is by actually you know taking profit. And he's exactly right. It's how simple it is. All right. So you have that sixteen dollars stop loss. You could do it mental. You could set it you know to be concrete. And as it moves up, you continue to just move your stop loss up a little bit. So at this at this play. And the higher you go, you're going to have to give it range. And as you can see, it continued, it continued, and it pulled back a little bit from a high of about 20, let's say almost 24, the touching back down of 20. All right, so that was a $4 range right there. So that's why you have to keep it a little bit wider, which means that eventually when you do get out of this, if you followed, it would have gone up to 29. Your stops would have been somewhere around 23 or $24 just to ensure the gain in case there's another run happening and i always say this until it breaks that support that hard support the play is not done okay and it doesn't mean ride it out because it's going to go back no you always want to you know ensure let it show you but it just means it's still in play now if this dropped all the way back you know to, to 13 you know 12 dollars and you can just be like, okay this is done no other retail trader is going to look at it 
but this is a play that you could have gotten in right at $16, let it run up, slowly move your stop losses. If you're working and you have a couple minutes to check your phone, then that's great. And you could have taken it from 16 to a conservative $22, $23, because you probably would have wrote it to this 29 and considering your stops would have been a little bit past, all right, especially seeing this 24 support. Once it broke that support, that, that, that really would have shown, okay, you know, it did a little bit too much to the downside, so let me get out of it. But let's take a quick look back just on the last 30 days, all right? And I'm going to go over a few stocks, okay? You see, actually, this was a little bit longer. You see GRE, which was formerly S SPRT. That one was a massive runner coming into it, and I know a lot of individuals had gotten burned on it, but this one actually ripped just a couple days ago from the $20 all the way up to the $30 level. You remember, guys, remember GWH? This was the Bill Gates-backed uh, SPAC all the way up from about you know about $10 as a consolidation all the way up to $29. Grom did its thing after following sentiment off of DATS numerous times. Uh, Lucid, which was a great swing play, actually, I talked about last week. I think it was last Wednesday I had alerted, but this was another, you know, another one that was a great mover. IRNT has had some moves in it as well. You can see right here, 10 up to about 18. And these are only just a couple that randomly popped off my head. IINN, this one I covered as well, was a great one from about $3 all the way up to $10. Okay, BKKT, I know a lot of you guys are familiar with this from eight to 60. All right, the Trump SPAC, DWAC, fun was massive from a dollar all the way up to $24. EQOS ripped as well. This was a sentiment off of BKKT. But my point behind this is you're starting to see these runners happen in being able to identify them and know good points to be able to get in on them, all right, and be able to where to set and move your stop losses. You're going to really be able to capitalize on the market cycle that we are in. So I hope this video gave you at least a pretty good understanding of what goes into you know looking at these plays? Check out Trade Ideas. I, I don't have an affiliate link for it, um, but check it out. You don't need the, the big one. You can do the standard one. I also think that if you go to exit out of your web browser, it'll give you a 15% off um, if you put in your email address. So that'll help as well. Or just use Market Watch and Investor Place at the beginning, and you'll start to see some of those pre-market movers. And sometimes these pre-market movers, they they, they they don't move to the upside. And that's why if you're able to short some of them, you know, Thinkorswim doesn't have available shorts all the time. But if you're able to short some of them, you can make a killing as they completely sell off as the news isn't that good. And that's why I always say, I always post in the group, guys, wait for, you know, a rip above a, a, a previous resistance you know, with some volume to show you that, you know, traders are in there, they're buying it, they want to move the stock, and that's where it is going to go in that direction. So I hope this video helped you. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.